Hi and welcome to Coffee Not Found, the podcast for the creative industry and gamification. Um, this week's episode is around sesame credits, and yeah. I'll let you go. From yeah, here. this is a weird one because it's kind of taking gamification to a complete extreme, and it's quite a big thing at the moment it's it's quite a lot on the news although i didn't know a whole lot about it until you mentioned it to me so it's not something i've seen that often and i've not seen that many youtube videos on either um there's one or two good ones yeah they've all been deleted (laughs) deleted. it's yeah it's kind of spooky um so if anybody uh, (laughs) yeah another reference to black mirror does the black mirror season three episode one is based off of this and this actually happening so it's actually based off a real event um it's not as scary as the black mirror one it's not at that extent yet yeah, yeah. um you just have to see what happens in 2020 i guess um so yeah, it's basically a sesame credit is basically a credit score system in china but it measures more than your finance it also measures measures your social interactions um people are quite worried about that being brought in with possibly political leaning so um, depending on how you act on social media and who you're friends with, your credits can be brought down. And credits at the moment are mainly uh, rewardable. So you get, if you have high credits, you get rewards. At the moment, there's not too, man- too many punishments for people with low credits, but it has been spoken about that they are actually going to have penalties for that. The whole idea of this is um, the Chinese government and the central bank wanted to establish a way for them to have a proper credit score. Only one third of people in China had a, have a credit score, a financial credit score. So it's quite hard to tell if, you know, they're suitable for a loan. Mm-hmm. And they so they brought it out to, they kind of left it to these private credit scoring companies to, to deal with. And these are quite big companies. So they've got the Alibaba group, which is involved. It's their bank, uh, that their bank affiliate, which is... Ant, is it? Ant, yeah, Ant Financials. Um, so um they've created this through um they own alipay and aliexpress which a lot of people in europe would know about and um they're like the amazon of china and also another one called tencent which is has done its own credit score um version it's called tencent credit and it's not as popular but still quite a lot of people involved in it and i was actually surprised at how popular this actually is um so the whole idea is if you obey the law and if you interact properly socially and if you keep if you purchase products that they consider good to purchase like the likes of work shoes or local produce on with your phone um because in uh, china they're really trying to push to the future for having a, a cashless society and everything's paid for using your phone um so a lot of it's done through alipay we pay these kind of these kind of um apps um so your uh, your information is kind of tracked to an extent and it's given it gives you a score afterwards it calculates it through your what you buy and your kind of what loans you have and stuff like that um if you have a high credit score you're it is easier to get a loan from ant financial and if you don't if you have a lot of sesame credits you do and if you don't then it's quite difficult to get a loan and they're a very big bank Mm. um so it's at the moment it's completely optional it has been since 2015 but in two years from now in 2020 it's got the chinese government want to issue a mandatory social credit scoring system so it's, it won't be these but it'll be their own one and these private companies are the pilot for this happening because yeah, isn't it uh, tencent is the other company tencent well, are the other company credit. doing it yeah there's just the tencent credit and they own g- companies like riot games they own yeah a lot of people think that they still own 97 percent. but when some i think riot split from something um they ended up buying all of it so tencent are actually the company who fund riot games and they're the ones who are doing the Tencent credit, and which is done through WeChat, which is a very popular, and QQ, two very social, uh, very popular social platforms, and they track your social interactions and give you a score based on them. Um, a lot of people are worried about the likes of, you know, if you share a post about something in the economy that's doing that's going badly, will your credit score go down? But if you share a post about how great the economy is from a government-sponsored news site mm. does your credit score go up um i haven't been so <laughs> it's yet to be tested as far as i can tell there are a couple of articles online about that kind of yeah. thing i haven't been there i was last time i was china was 2010 so. yeah 
we weren't at smartphone territory <laughs> then. I did have a BlackBerry. Mm-hmm. So I had one of those. BlackBerry? Mm. Mm. Very good. Um, so is Hillary Clinton here? <laughs> there there you go. Um, and yeah. then, yeah, so Tencent is the guys behind Riot Games, uh, Epic Games, Activision Blizzard? Yeah, so Epic Games, they own a, a majority share. So they own most of uh, Epic Games and most of the shares anyway. And I think a quarter of Activision Blizzard. So Activision Blizzard, same studio, but then broken down into two studios. Okay. And uh, they own a quarter of both. Yeah, very good. Um, they own none of us. Yeah. No. We're good. Yeah. We, we don't totally really care good. what you do on social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we start raking. Oh, they shared the post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. oh, they didn't share. They were negative. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, I suppose yeah. You mentioned Black Mirror, the one that I I think it's, yeah, it's, is it's based off that and some uh, the Orwellian theory, which is 1984's book and like a movie mm. adaptation. I haven't seen it. I'm now really interested to watch it, but apparently it's considered an Orwellian nightmare. Yeah. No, I mean, um, what's the name of the company? Or like the oh, the Orville. Um, yeah. Have you gone around to watching that yet? No, still haven't gone around to watching it, but I really do want to watch. Season it. two is out this year some stage um but in orville one of the episodes they go into a planet where they're pre-space travel but everything is based on likes yeah so everybody has a badge going around. and they have a like and a dislike mm. and basically there's two scores and they stick with you for life once you turn i don't know what age it was re- young enough anyway and you start with so many likes on it and people press depending and each badge has a serial number but so if something goes viral of you doing something wrong you can be Broadcast yeah. disliked. I think if you get up to 10 million dislikes, you then go on to a news show where you have to go around and apologize to everybody. And if you don't apologize properly, they then wipe your brain because you're not wow, acceptable that's to a the. Bit intense. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's really interesting to see, like, you know, when, when, and basically all of justice is based on this. It's not based on whether you killed yeah. someone or not. It's just it's, likes and dislikes. It's, yeah, it's been suggested that this is supposed to be used as another arm for the judicial system in China basically to create social pressure so that people don't commit wrong and it's it, like in a sense uh, I've the interviews I've seen over there a lot of people are really in support of it to stop the likes of jaywalking and not paying for train fares or that mm. kind of thing and China have come around and said that they're restricting the way they were quite lax with how what information was collected by these companies and what way it was being used um so they did they are bringing out a cyber law this year a new one to deal with that but a lot of people think that's just kind of a cover for the fact that they're building their own right now and they <laughs> want it to seem safe when this yeah. comes out that's what i've read anyway from articles online um which never lie no never no the government did say that the aim of their project that they're releasing in 2020 for everybody to be scored socially on credit that um the stated aim was of providing the trustworthy with benefits and disciplining the untrustworthy. Yeah, and I think as well, it penalizes your circle of friends, which means it pe- makes yeah. people alienate low-scoring people. Yeah. So if you are somebody who's a bit of a, a, a mold breaker and you kind of, you think, you know, you're, you're more the stand up and protest kind of person, yeah. all your mates are going, well, I want to get a house so I can't be around you. I have yeah. to unfriend you. Yeah, uh, the interviews I've seen, everybody was like, no, I wouldn't unfriend anybody if they're a friend in real life and all this stuff. But, you're like, yeah. you know, wait until it happens. Like, it depends on how stri- it depends on how stringent this stuff is. Like, if you're only lowered by a credit, you know what I mean? It yeah. really depends. And But the only thing I think is if you're born into the wrong place, like, it, it's affected by what you buy as well. Like, if you buy cheap clothing and junk food and if you play a lot of video games, your score mm-hmm. goes down because you're seen as not a productive member of society or you're seen as eating the wrong stuff and purchasing the wrong stuff. You're not a, considered a proper working class person. And if you're born into somewhere that's not so well off and you have to buy fake clothing and the food you have to buy is imported and cheap, it's not local produce, then you're kind of starting off bad. Yeah. And you don't really have that much of a chance unless yeah, it'll you start hanging re- out with people who yeah, have better it'll, scores it'll, than you. It'll just reset. It'll be... It, it's you're the stuck same. there. Yeah. You're, you're in a cycle then and it'll be hard to get a loan and... That kind of thing, mm. but it'll, it 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 I suppose it depends on how it's done, but it's quite scary because it's something that could go so wrong. Yeah, um, as seen by the Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it's, I I just 
makes my skin crawl when I see some things like that. Yeah, it's unbelievably popular as well. <laughs> and there's 1.39 billion people in China, so all of them are going to be on that. And that's quite a chunk of our just 7.6 billion people on the planet. That's quite a chunk of the world population. People, it, people yeah. in the West are even worried about that being a blueprint for. Yeah. So we'll I'll have to see what happens. Yeah. At least you have more. Like it's easier to roll it out with 1.4 billion when they're on the one country in the same sets of yeah. laws. Um, yeah. We. I've, I was reading books, Colin Tangent. Um, I was reading cool. some books that I don't know the name of the author, which is really annoying, but I know they were called. Uh, Proxima and Ultima, I think, oh, okay. um, and they're like they're sci-fi books, but basically it's based on a world where uh, it's a couple of hundred years into the future, and you know intergalactic travel. They haven't; they've only managed to really traveling around the solar system, not outside the solar system. But then they find a way of doing it. But um, the world is basically split into the Chinese and the UN. The entire oh, world is the Chinese or the UN, and they've split the solar system up. Everything from Earth into the sun is the UN and everything from Earth out is, um, sorry, no, how do they work? It was at the asteroid belt, everything from Mars in was UN and everything from Mars out was China. Okay. Um, and like just the different way mentality of the people who lived in them, it was very, yeah. very interesting. Um, but it just should, there is, a, there is a distinct difference. Like if you go over that, there's... Yeah, yeah it's it, completely different. It's yeah. a completely different political system too, like to... Yeah where we are in Ireland anyway. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. We're, I love we're different anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love their queuing system. Um, yeah. I've been at traffic lights in, in uh, Beijing and the person at the front of the queue won't take off very quick, which mm -hmm. is me as a driver really annoys me. But over there, if they don't take off very quick, it's not unusual for people to just overtake them. At the traffic lights in the middle of the city, yeah. just overtake them and it's all <laughs> fine because obviously you were in more of a rush than they were. So yeah. now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's from anyway. a different culture anyway. Um, and that's not racial stereotyping. That's just me saying what I've seen when I was over there. Yeah. Like, I hope. That. Don't worry about Give it. Give out to me in the comments below. It's fine. <laughs> Colin needs to learn. Okay. So another weird thing that came with this was Sesame Credit works in conjunction with Vahi.com, which is the biggest online matchmaking service in China. So. Oh, man. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so good scores get good scores. Um, That's brilliant. Can you imagine it goes, okay, so this person needs correction. We'll pair him with somebody really high up in Sesame <laughs> Credit. Like, you know, yeah. guy turns up in like a leather jacket, tattoos. I run a rebel against the system and the other one's going, no, you don't. Let me show you. you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting, this whole topic. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on about it. Tinder for Sesame Credits. Like, you know, yeah. My Sesame score is A+. Plus. Swipe right. Yeah, it's uh, obviously... Kind of, everybody almost has a rating online now anyway like a social rating to the extent that your presence online is so big the amount of likes you get and all that depends on whether like depending on the person a lot of people either do care about it or don't care about it it's the fact that that's linked with your financial credit that's the big deal yeah. and the fact that you get penalised for having a low score I did see that they reported that there was already people who are being restricted on domestic flights because their score were too low so they couldn't book to fly and I know definitely that from another site that you can, um, people who have a high score, I think uh, it could be 650, 750 above, it ranges between 350 and 950, I think, or 250 and 950. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the notes, but I don't want to keep having to read the notes all the time. Um, they, uh, yeah, so you, it's very, if you're considered trustworthy, it's it's a lot easier to apply for a visa. So if your credit, if your Sesame credit score is higher or your Tencent credit score is higher, it's easier to get a visa. I know that they already started doing that with flights to Singapore. So you can go there on a holiday or on a work holiday or whatever it is um, with very little documentation, I, I think, if you're above 750 credits. Hmm. And I know Beijing Airport for a while ran a fast track for people with credits over 750 so you could you, uh -huh. you got into the fast track lane by being a trustworthy citizen or whatever or a hacker who's changed your scores yeah i wonder how tough the firewalls are <laughs> someone will find out i'm sure oh yeah suddenly you people with ten thousand <laughs> yeah. points rocking <laughs> that's through. not even like legit yeah. and it's like yeah. well i got them so yeah <laughs> 
Um, I'm a platinum, 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 diamond. Platinum. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's, I suppose, tying it back to the creative thing and the gamification. It is the gamification, but it's the gamification of society. And kind yeah. of going back to a couple of weeks ago when we did the piece about gamifying good behavior and bad behavior, that's where this kind of came from, where we were going, this is what happens when it goes, what we would consider wrong. The thing is, as you yeah. said, over there, it's actually popular. And who are we to judge? To judge that, yeah. Well, I am. I'm I have judging. seen, like, I, I did see an interview and there was, you know, um, I don't know, about eight or t eight to ten people on the interview. And I think two were against it and the other majority were delighted with it. They were like, I'm a law abiding citizen. It doesn't affect me. I'm happy that I get rewarded for doing things right. I do things right every day. And I was like, that's that's a good point. But for the people who were worried about what they've like, what you purchase is going to affect your score. What you do, everything you do. Yeah, <laughs> but as well, it, it's who dictates what good behavior is. Yeah. That's, you the, know? that's so the kind of thing. Right now, because it's a pilot project, it's private things, and it's not mandatory, and not everybody's on the system, and so it's not really affecting people as much. But when it is mandatory, who decides what, I guess? And that's two years away, not even less. Yeah. And already I, I've got this from a... This is coming from a UK um, news agency called Reuters, and they reported that restrictions on citizens and businesses with low trustworthiness... Um, social credit, low, yeah, low trustworthiness, social credit ratings would come into effect on May first. So, and so the in effect by the time this goes live, then. Yeah. So I've never seen this video. That's Saws. in effect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I, as I say, I. I mean, I just like you know when somebody's at the top and you're thinking, uh, okay, long hair is now considered. Yeah, like um, bad. So <laughs> you're suddenly like, but yeah. I'm a good citizen. It's like, well, no, because you're not doing something that we yeah. deem. It depends on what way it goes, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Which route is it going to take? Yeah, because it depends on the politicians of the day. All right. Okay, we've gone way off track. Yeah, this will be. I think we'll the round a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Will we? It'll be a really short video, and just at the very end, it'll come with Colin going, "We've gone way <laughs> yeah. off track." You're like, "No, the video was only five minutes. What are you talking about?" <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Your turn to close. And uh, yeah, so this has been Coffee Not Found in association with Nebula Innovations. Um, you can find us on all of our social media, which takes us forever to always list out, but it's Coffee NF Podcast on Facebook and Instagram, at Coffee NF on Twitter, and Coffee Not Found on all of our media platforms like YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. And coffeenotfound.com is where you can kind of just go and all of that information is there for you. <laughs> so and if you're looking for directions, coffeenotfound.com. Yeah, it can go from there. Yeah. And if you have any ideas or anything you want to see us cover, yeah, let us if know. You, if there's anything you think Jack should research and then I should read off of a page <laughs> yeah, off the of start, a page. <laughs> let us know. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. I'm off on holiday. <laughs>